Marianne Wolf, Proust and the Squid, The Story and Science of the Reading Brain. Embark on a fascinating journey through the history and science of reading with Marianne Wolf's Proust and the Squid, The Story and Science of the Reading Brain. Discover how our brains adapted to the challenge of reading as humans began to write, forming new neural pathways and rearranging themselves in the process. Dive into the origins of different writing systems, the influential role of alphabets, and how early exposure to reading benefits a child's development. This book summary will also explore the various stages of reading development, the never-ending process of learning to read, and the intricacies of dyslexia and its potential links to creativity. The Evolution of Reading The discovery of writing revolutionized human communication and changed our brains. While the origins of writing are unclear, humans began recording information through visual symbols long before alphabets existed. With the development of writing, our brains formed new neural pathways that allowed us to recognize and decode complex visual symbols at a rapid pace. As we became more proficient readers, our brain activity nearly tripled, engaging areas specialized in language processing, hearing, and abstract concepts. The angular gyrus, a part of the brain responsible for association and object recognition, played a crucial role in the development of complex writing systems. The evolution of reading has transformed our brains and our ability to communicate and preserve information for future generations. The Evolution of Writing Writing has evolved through different systems of representation across various parts of the world. Two of the early writing systems, the Sumerian cuneiform and Egyptian hieroglyphs were initially pictographic. Over time, these systems became more abstract, complex, and harder to learn. However, the ancient Greeks discovered writing as easy as ABC when they invented the first alphabetic system. The Greek system broke their language into a limited number of sounds each represented by a letter, making it quicker and easier to learn. This invention revolutionized our ability to record spoken and unspoken thoughts and to form novel ones. The alphabetic system led to an incredibly prolific period for the Greeks in art, culture, science, and politics which we can still learn and read about today. Reading to your child matters. Reading to young children at an early age has a significant impact on their future reading and language abilities. The foundation for reading is laid early in a child's life, and their brains begin preparing for the task before they understand a single word. Children's perception, attention, and conceptual systems develop rapidly in the early years, making it crucial to read to them at this time. Reading to kids also helps improve their speech development, vocabulary, and ability to learn to read. Reading stories of dragons, elves, and princesses teaches young children empathy and helps them see the world from someone else's perspective. On the other hand, children who come from language-impoverished homes, in which they were not read to or talked to, have a smaller vocabulary and often struggle with learning to read. Therefore, it's essential to start reading to your child early to build a solid foundation for their future reading and language abilities. Stages of Reading Development Glenda Bissex beautifully details the five stages of reading development, starting from pre-readers who make hilarious mistakes to reading experts who access millions of parallel universes through books. Novice readers go through a pattern of errors, but decoding readers, fluent readers, and finally, comprehending readers have fully automatic reading skills that never stop expanding. The Power of Reading Brains as children become expert readers, they unlock new features of the text and delve deeper into the reading process. With improved reading fluency comes a newfound ability to understand irony, metaphors, and different perspectives, and connect what they're reading to their own lives. The visual and association memory work in tandem to retrieve knowledge of the word and its context. As we age and accumulate life experience, Previous readings of a book can take on a completely different meaning than before. Overall, reading is a limitless journey of learning and discovery that never truly ends. The Many Faces of Dyslexia Dyslexia is a complex condition with various subtypes and potential causes. While it involves challenges with reading, 
it can manifest differently in different individuals. Dyslexia has been linked to flaws in brain structures responsible for reading, slowed processing speed, and communication gaps between brain regions. Modern brain imaging shows that dyslexics use different brain circuitry for reading. Despite these differences, people with dyslexia can still achieve success in various fields, as evidenced by prominent figures such as Leonardo da Vinci, Thomas Edison, and Albert Einstein. Dyslexia and Unique Talents Dyslexia is often perceived as a reading disorder, but it could instead be due to a variation in the deeper structures of a dyslexic brain. Dyslexics may have unique talents because of their different brain structure, and some of history's famous geniuses, such as Leonardo da Vinci, Edison, and Einstein, also had dyslexia. The theory is that because dyslexics use their two brain hemispheres more symmetrically, they have a preference for right brain circuits in a variety of tasks, which may account for their remarkable visual and spatial abilities. Parents and educators need to be aware of a child's potential reading problems and provide immediate intervention so that they do not get left behind and society does not miss out on their amazing talent. Reading in the Digital Age Our society must preserve the skill of reading for personal and cultural development, despite the changing nature of text in the digital era. The advent of writing wasn't embraced by everyone in ancient Greece. Socrates, a well-known philosopher from that time, completely rejected the new technology, arguing that it would make human thought inflexible and corrupt our memory, and eventually fool us into taking all written information as given truths. Remarkably, these are the same arguments critics have made about the internet and technology today. What happens to our reading ability in the digital age? With vast amounts of information at our fingertips and text more dynamic and changeable than ever before, Will technology unlock new features of our brain, or make us unlearn the skills that helped create it? The key message of this summary is clear, reading is an important part of our personal and cultural development, and we must do our best to preserve it. Of course, there's no need to be overly alarmed, as Socrates' concerns about writing seem trifling today. Nevertheless, higher levels of digital reading contribute to a measurable decline in attention spans, memory, and verbal SAT scores, indicating that the new way of reading might come at a cost. As we navigate into a new era, we should remind ourselves of what we gain from learning to read, both as individuals and as a species. Through writing, we've been able to preserve spoken and unspoken thoughts, giving us access to other people's thoughts and experiences in a completely new way. It furthered intellectual and cultural development, and freed up brain space used by memory for more complex cognitive operations. Time is perhaps the most crucial aspect of old-school reading that we need to preserve. Although time can seem like a scarce resource in our digital age, it is what distinguishes merely understanding text, and going beyond the words to connect it intimately with our own experiences, ideas, and knowledge. It is our duty to assure that every child, regardless of dyslexia or other challenges, is given the proper tools to unlock the secret of reading and acknowledge its powerful implications for intellectual and personal development. In Proust and the Squid, Marianne Wolf chronicles the remarkable journey of our brains and the process of learning to read, from the development of writing systems to the growing complexity of language and alphabets. The significance of reading for cognitive and intellectual development is emphasized, along with the importance of reading to young children. With a deeper understanding of how our brains adapt to reading, the five stages of reading development, and the connections to dyslexia and creativity, we can appreciate our reading capabilities and strive to preserve the powerful tool of reading in the ever-evolving digital age.